What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcast for the next episode of this war of mine. These traps are paying back in dividends, I don't know if these got like buffed or what. These may have gotten hot fixed because I don't remember the traps going off this often, like we are catching a lot of goodies, I mean it's rats. I could try and reclassify it as goodies, but you know, Soylent Green is rats in this case, I, I don't know. I can't keep lying to my people, I'm like listen, we've been eating rat for like the last 25 days. I don't even think they care anymore, they seem to just be stoked about the fact that we get to have dinner. Which, that's a good attitude to have in a world where you are forced to eat rat on a daily basis. You gotta do what you gotta do in order to survive. We've got some weird, like, heat fluctuations going on right now. Like, it seems like we're wavering back and forth in between, like, horrible winter and amazing summer, I guess. I don't know. If you wanna know how I... So, here's my fast and dirty... This is my quick and dirty trick for... Oh, we made filters. I've got a quick and dirty trick for converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit. It's not accurate, so don't do it on a math test. If you do it on a math test, you're not going to get the answer right. But I just double it and I add 32, and that's how I just kind of like, eh, get close enough. Like, it's reasonable enough. I, you know, I don't use the Celsius very often. <laughs> I don't use the Celsius very often. I actually, when you go to college, you start using Kelvin for everything. At least that's what we used it for everything. You had to do Kelvin, which is like... I don't know, Celsius plus 212 or something like that, I don't remember. It's been a while. This is what happens too, you pay like lots and lots of money to like go to college and you put yourself in debt for like years and then you forget it all like six months after you get out of college. But you've got a shiny piece of paper that sits on the wall that says you know it. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I <laughs> I didn't really use mine. I'm kind of like one of those people that's like, yeah, I went to college and then I got a different job on YouTube and then never used it. I don't know. Maybe YouTube will fall apart at some day and then I'll actually be able to use my degree. But I did the backup plan and I would highly recommend that other people do that. Like, have a career that you do. I had a guy one time. I'm saying this because we're having a slow day right now. There's nothing that we really, like, need to accomplish right now. I had a guy one time tell me that he had, like, $15,000 in savings. And that he could live off of it for two years without doing any work or doing anything. And that he was going to be a YouTuber. And he wanted me to give him a percentage chance that he would be a YouTuber within two years making a living doing it. And I was just like, I, I can't tell you right there, man, because there's like so many different components that go into like success on YouTube. Like, I don't even consider myself a success at this point. That's the thing is I still consider my employment like working on YouTube as very, very tentative. Like, it's it's kind of a scary job. Like, it's a very, very shaky footstool that could get kicked out from under you at any given moment just based on certain legal precedents and like certain things happening in the gaming industry. My job could be done like tomorrow and that's it. Depending on, like, let's say that Nintendo decides to sue somebody who makes an LP, and if the court upholds the decision to, like, prosecute, or to make them pay a fine, as though, like, the... If the LP made is deemed as part of the intellectual property of Nintendo, then my career is over. That means that you can't make LPs for a living anymore, there's no money in it. I would still make LPs, because it's fun, and I enjoy doing it, and I have a big following on the internet, and it's a blast, but I would have to go back to work, and I'd probably start making, like, two videos a day instead of four. But... That's what I mean, is that LP as a medium is like one court case away from not existing. It's also one court case away from being incredibly profitable. And so that's the reason why Nintendo, for example, Nintendo has had a long-standing tradition of not really liking LPers, but kind of just like putting up with us. The big company that really, really doesn't like us, oh, I'm trying to think of who it was. There's somebody that like sues us every single time. I think it's Sega. I think Sega doesn't like us at all. I don't want you to chop, don't chop up that bed please. I accidentally gave the command to chop up the bed. That'd be a weird, if somebody came into my house one day and was like, I need you to chop up this bed. I'd be like, first of all, what are you doing in my house? I don't even know you. Second of all, I kind of like that bed and it's the only one that I've got. And I don't think that my mattress is made out of wood. Like in this game you get wood when you destroy a mattress. My mattress is not made out of wood. It seems to be fairly comfortable. Anyways, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a tentative situation right now where indie developers tend to like us, and they tend to send games to us, whereas AAA people tend to not like us because we tend to be, they can't bribe us is what it comes down to. I, I'm fairly positive that like the larger news outlets get bribed. I, I, it's something that I don't say with a lot of confidence, but it's just, it's definitely a conflict of interest when you see like a World of Warcraft review with a World of Warcraft ad right above it. Because that means that Blizzard paid money to have that ad put right there above their own review and that means that if the company doesn't give them a good review, Blizzard could pull their advertising and they would lose a bunch of money on a AAA developer, right? It's a conflict of interest, which makes me very... It makes me not trust, like, the normal journalistic outcroppings that everybody else seems to just kind of, like, go along with. I need a crowbar. Let's make a crowbar real fast. I think a crowbar takes an hour, but we need one. There's going to be... we got to pry some stuff open in the future. But yeah, 
I think that's why AAA don't like us is because we call them out on their bullshit and like other outlets don't. Like for example, no matter what, you can guarantee that like every Call of Duty game gets like a good review. Every Blizzard game always gets a good review. And that may be because according to like, I, don't, I find that Blizzard games are always pretty decent. They've got a good quality standard. Not a big fan of where they've taken World of Warcraft in the last two or three expansions, but you know. But in the case of like Call of Duty, it's like the same thing. Every single game, like I play Call of Duty, like I'm not gonna be a hypocrite. I buy Call of Duty, but I wait till like every two or three iterations. So for example, I'll wait like a year and a half and buy another Call of Duty when I'm in the mood. I don't buy like every single Call of Duty that comes out because they're all mostly the same with like small modifications. You can like go a year and a half and still play like Black Ops 2 and like two years later. I wanna go into the Central Square and see what's up over here. I'm gonna see what's inside that building off to the left. I've never gone in there. We're gonna find out. Let's go ahead and take, actually I'm gonna take Erica because she's more, eh. Yeah, Erica's more expendable. I'm gonna take her. We'll take Erica over and we'll see what kind of trouble she can get herself into on that leftmost area. I'm gonna bring a knife and a crowbar with me. Just in case. I just wanna see what's on the left. There usually there's guys standing guard right there, so if there's no guy standing guard, we're gonna go straight in and just sort of like see what happens. It looks like there's like an underground area too. I don't know how that affects things, but there's like a yeah, it's like a subway. It looks like there's a bar and everything down there. Wow. Looks like they got it set up. So going past this point, is it a good idea or a bad idea? Looks like we got some burglars in here. Looks like we got some people ready to burgle. I think I need a lockpick in order to do this appropriately. Then again... Where is he gonna go? Oh, he went in there? Okay. Do it! Eh. Pry that shit open. Oh, she actually pries really quietly. Look at that! Her little noise radius is like nothing! Oh my god, Erica's a gangster. Oh, I might have to take Erica from now on. Forget Roman. Erica can like pry open doors and stuff without getting in trouble. What a G. Okay. You guys said that she gets stealth kills without like anything going wrong. I don't know how we're going to be able to kill people up in here. But I'm just going to wait. I'll probably try and get this guy right here. I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy, but he's about to get dealt with. Not much I can do about that. Oh, nope. Back through there. Close the door. Hey! Nope, run! I'll put the weapon down in just a second. I'll put the, I got the weapon. It's, the weapon is put down. Just please don't do that again. Oh, he unlo he relocked the door. Okay. How come I can't, did he technically like not close it or something? I don't know. Oh, it's technically locked right now. That's weird. Even though the door is bugged open, that's funny. Okay, well I'm gonna pry it back open. I didn't know he was gonna go up the stairs. Yeah, leave the lock alone for a second. We're just gonna mess with this thing for a little bit. It looks like he's just like sitting on the stairs right now. I don't know, that might be a rat or something. I've never done this building, so I'm gonna err on the side of caution if I can. It looks like they're just pacing on the stairs. It might be bugged. No, we shall not trade. Why does that guy close the door? That's weird. Oh, this is his house? Whose house is this? All these people own this house? Really? Every single one of these people, this is their house? Oh, wow. Okay, so that's kind of crazy. I may have messed that up then. We needed to do it right the first time. This guy shouting brought everybody else over. We were able to get inside without anybody noticing, though, so I'm going to come back tomorrow night. We'll give it another try. It's fine. I've never done this before, so I'd rather play it safe than sorry. Either way, it appears as though most of the vendors like live inside that building or something, so they all came over and started messing with us. Not all of them, but a couple of them did, which makes that a little bit more precarious now that they're hovering around the door waiting for me to leave. We'll bring back some bullets or something. I don't know. People just kind of have to deal with the fact that we didn't bring back anything good. We don't need anything, so it's kind of just like I can play around for the rest of the game and just like fiddle with systems because we're already secure. We're going to survive this game. There's seriously no way for me to screw this up at this point. I could, with one person, survive at this point. We're so well entrenched and so well off. Alright, no luck tonight. Well, you found two bullets? That's kind of lucky. I don't know. It's better to have a bullet and not need one than to need a bullet and not have one. I'm. Everything else is cut off by the war right now, though, so I don't really have much to do. 
everybody's hungry. It's the 24th. Let's go ahead and have everybody go to bed, and then once they all sleep, I really wish there was a double speed button, like seriously, because it's going to be one of those days that we just do nothing all day. We don't have the materials to like repair most of the stuff in our inventory, so yeah, we're just going to be chilling today. Not really much to do, although not literally, it's not that cold out. Eh, that's kind of a bonus. You take what you can get in this life, I guess. Did we all eat yesterday? I think we did. Pretty sure we did. Anyways, what can I do here? I don't know. Go to the metal shop. Maybe we can fix a helmet or something. I could use one. Actually, make us a couple lock picks too. If we get through some locks a little bit easier, that'd make our life a tad quicker. And it precludes me from having to bring a crowbar along on all these adventures. I wish we could go back to the apartment complex because that's the place that I have a long-standing just history with. And I really, really, really want to beat it and like win. I want to make it through and just be like, apartment complex, thou art vanquished. And it'll be like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and be all happy for us. I don't know. I assume that there will be trumpeters. After the borders between our turf and the enemies were more or less stable, things got even uglier. Entire groups were rounded up and some people shot after having been interrogated. One day we were ordered to dispose of a bunch of such poor bastards. I recognized one of them. It was Leon, my best childhood buddy. I aimed over their heads. The others didn't. Yikes. That's pretty metal. It's pretty harsh right there. It's definitely... That'd be traumatic. That'd give you some bad dreams. Alright, well let's wait for everybody else to be done right here. This is kind of like one of those really, really sort of boring days where nothing's going to happen. So I think I might actually cut it right here and we'll just come back in like once the day is over and we do all the basic stuff. Or if anything interesting happens. Alright, so we're coming back right now. I actually just like skipped the day after I put everybody to bed so it should be fine. I'm going to take Erica back to the central square. I want to go into that building. I want to go into that building very, very badly. It's kind of like that thing that I'm not allowed to touch. And so I kind of, I, I do this all the time when I play by my lonesome. I get really, really like hyper-focused on dumb shit. And this is one of those times where it's probably going to get me in trouble. People have to eat tomorrow, so I'll leave them right there. But we really have nothing to like fiddle with. So I feel like we should probably just like hustle ahead, right? Instead of doing the same things over and over again. Give her a couple of lock picks just in case. Give her a knife. Like a helmet? No, she doesn't need a helmet. The helmet I don't think you can actually equip anyways. I think the helmet's just a passive for your defensive missions. Whereas, you will see a difference with the bullet armor. You can actually wear the body armor. So over here on this side, if I can avoid getting caught again. If they're still hanging out over here, there's really nothing I can do. Oh, he's guarding the front door now. Aw, oh, son of a bitch. Okay. So like, you basically get one shot at that, and then there's nothing else you can do about it. Wow, he came up from all the way over there. Alright. Well. I'm kind of wondering if that door is locked. If I could make a run for it. If I can make a run for it, I probably wouldn't get in too much trouble. I've just got to outrun him, though. She doesn't make any noise when she runs, so I might be able to make this work. That dude's right there. I don't know what's actually in here, but I, that's a really, really big building. So I assume that door's locked right there. Oh, okay. So he's going to go through it. I could bring back Roman and I could kill this guy. But... What's upstairs? Do you have a gun? I thought he pointed a gun at me gonna say if he's got a gun that's concerning does he just like try and fight me if I go in there what happens oh I'm coming closer what are you gonna do oh I'm inside the boundary oh I stepped over the line I stepped over the line what are you gonna do nothing I'm in your house right now I am in your house like shitting on your turf right now I'm kind of worried that if I kill people all these guys are gonna freak out on me and try and murder me what do you guys think is gonna happen I could totally stab this guy in the face. Oop, let's close that door so that nobody comes and locks it because I'm going to try and kill this guy in just a second. I know I said this was going to be a good guy playthrough, but I'm kind of curious what happens over here if you kill these people. Let's find out. Oh, she... Oh, he got a gun! No! Run, fool! Run! Oh, I didn't know he had a gun. Oh, that's not okay. Uh, 
Oh, this guy's about to get dealt with. Hold on. I'm about to get this guy right now. Oh, everybody knows his name, too? Oh, man, that sucks. So, apparently, we want to go where everybody knows Juro's name. Well, that's problematic. It appears as though if you mess this up once, you're done. What's he doing right now? I've got my eye on you. Will all these people freak out? Oh, they do. Wow, okay. So that's like everybody. Okay, so I guess going to the left is a bad idea and you only get one shot at it. I suppose. Alright, we'll leave this place alone for a little bit. I messed it up and I guess I've just got to live with that. I would save Scummit if it was my own game just to get practice in and figure out how to like breach that location. But it looks like you only get one chance. Then that guy stands guard right there. The last time he wasn't standing guard and so I messed up by making the guy inside shout because he went up the stairs instead of... Like, standing around down there like, I thought he was going to go through the door and he went up the stairs instead. Should have waited a second. Then I could have got in there. Alright, Erica's off the hook. We don't have to go out with her anymore. I mean, there's nowhere else we can go right now. That's the big problem is that there's, like, nothing anyways. Alright, everybody off to bed. Yet another day in which we will more than likely do like nothing. Frankly, I could probably build another bed and just make my life easier and let everybody rest. Wait. What is, oh, did I assign them both to the same bed here? You go upstairs and sleep right there. It'd be weird being on a sleeping assignment if you think about it, but like, this bed is yours for the next four hours. Then you wake up and do guard duty and get shot at. I'm like, oh man, how did I get myself into this situation? Get to get shot at, this sucks. I don't want to be shot at. I would prefer to not hear like, you know, like that's, that's my impression of a fire zone. <laughs> Alright, so we gotta make meals today, so I guess that'll be like our interesting thing of the day that we do. It actually looks like it's kinda cold right now. Let me, let me heat up the house real quick. Heat up the house. Alright, let's go heat up the house. We can still make more water too, so we might as well do that. I mean, I don't know. I find that towards the end of the game, this always happens where I have like a huge surplus of everything. And then I just kinda like sit around being bored until I restart the game. Like, I like the beginning a lot more than the middle because I guess that I always end up, like, too self-sufficient. Like, this always happens to me. I always end up with, like, more stuff than I can physically use. I'm just gonna make a bunch of fuel right now because there's nothing else to do. I'm gonna keep the canned food on hand just in case the little kids come around. Although, we might have gotten them already in this playthrough. I don't remember. We're almost done with the game. We have, seriously, like, seven more days until the peacekeepers get here. I actually find that once you know how to play the game, this game has, like, no... The, the game has very, very little replay value. Because once you figure out how to beat all the locations, it becomes too easy and like this happens where you just end up with loads of bullets, loads of food and everything else. And then you've got to inflict like, you know, handicaps on yourself by taking bad groups. Have a look at what I brought. That's what I'm gonna do. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so you want some assault rifles? Huh? That's exactly what I need. I can give you a lot for this. Sir, what ha what need have I for a lot when I have no car? Sir? I also- I have no Christmas trees. I have no car. I don't need a lot. I need more practical goods like these right here. Take those, yeah. That's what I want. I want those right there. Can we fit anything else in? <laughs> that would be the point at which the 14 year old in me would say, that's what she said. But anyways. I'm not going to do it because that's not how we roll here at the Nerd Castle. Instead, I'm going to passive-aggressively do it, like, in a sideways way. I'm sort of disappointed that we can't break into that house on the left. It seemed like the kind of challenge that I need right now. I don't know. I'll probably just start flipping rifles. I mean, we've got so many different, like, things that we don't need at this point. Take the three bullets just in case we get raided. See how many of these I could fit in here. Oh, I'm already up and over. There we go. That seems alright. We'll take it. We need more wood very, very badly. So if we could take more wood right now, probably get rid of that and see where that puts us with this wood trade. Not very far is where it puts us. Yeah, these trades are definitely starting to become, like, not in our favor. Although fuel is technically what I need, not the wood. I just need fuel. So if I can, if I can get some more fuel, I'd rather do that. There we go. He has no sugar with him this time, which is disappointing. We could trade out for some of this tobacco, though. We do have a lot of stuff laying around that we could get rid of. Like, a lot of food, a lot of pills. Lots and lots of things that could be flipped. Hmm. I'm gonna keep the guns that we have for right now. 
Since we got another helmet, I might flip that one right there so that I can make a new one in just a second. There we go. That'll get us out of here with the things we need to survive. Send you on your way. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here, you stripey bastard. Oh, he closed our door. What a gentleman. Right after I called him a bastard, too. Well, that's what you get. That's what you get. See, this is the story of my life. I run my big fat mouth, and then somebody does something like that that makes me feel like an idiot. And so now I just don't talk anymore. I mean, I talk on the internet for a living. Granted, you've got me there. Congratulations, you got me. That's the that's the coup de gras. You you got me. You got me. But what I'm saying here is that in real life, I actually don't talk that much. Like seriously, people say I'm hella quiet in real life. As mind blowing as that might be, it's it's something about a microphone in front of my face that just makes me talkative and have things to say. It's because I think it's because most of the things that go on in my brain are like snark in real life. Like when I'm on the internet, I can just like talk and just because I'm doing something I enjoy right now. But in real life, I find that I'm always in situations that I just don't want to be in. So I'm just like, oh, I'm stuck at the DMV for eight hours. Let's just sit here for a while. And so, like, I always have snark and just sarcasm and passive-aggressive, like, stuff running through my head. And it always got me in trouble in the past when I just, like, vocalized it. was like, meh, I don't care about the consequences. And so now I just don't talk in real life because I rarely have anything nice to contribute to any conversation. That or I'm, like, not educated about something. That's the other part, is after I went to college, you learn real fast not to talk about things that you don't know anything about because you get called on it real fast because a college is essentially just, like, an amalgamation of people who, like, know a lot of stuff about individual concepts, and somebody will call you out on it eventually, so that kind of solidified it for me where I'm just like, eh. If I don't know, I'm probably not going to say anything about it. Although I've gotten a little bit better about it since I started working on YouTube. I will occasionally touch on things that I'm not totally educated about. I just, you always include that, you always include the reminder on the back end that like, these are the opinions of Splattercat and do not represent the opinions of people who may be watching and or listening and or educated about this subject. <laughs> All right. We're waiting for Roman to wake up so that we can feed him some lovely vittles. And then once Roman wakes his bad self up, we'll probably... I'm hoping the war ends right now. There's nothing for us to do. Like, seriously, there's nothing for us to do right now. The war is blocking off all the locations that I would go to after this. We could go out and just, like, scavenge parts and stuff, but that's kind of boring. Who wants to do that? I want to go kill folks. I want to get in fights. I want to scrap. I want to destroy bandits. I want to own them. I don't know. It's, it sounds like it would be a pretty good idea. I, it seems like fun. We have a knife, which is, like, Roman's favorite thing ever. The guy is like cuckoo for knives. Some people are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. He is cuckoo for knives. Cuckoo for cutting tools. There we go. Anyways, everybody's been fed. Everything's looking good. Bypass! Alright, so... Oh my god, the war is still apparently raging and we can't get to any of these fun places. Let's just go to St. Mary's. We'll go to St. Mary's. I think the guy with the gun in here is a friendly, but I can't remember. I think. Not sure. We'll have to check it out. I'm going to let... Oh, they're all on guard duty? Here, let him sleep in. Wow, I just got one of those. Do you ever have this happen to you? This might just be me. But I have this thing happen all the time where I get, like, these little points of light that dance around in my the periphery of my vision, like, along the sides. And then they just, like, disappear. No idea if everybody else gets those. But it looks like somebody's playing with, like, a laser pin out of the corner of my eye. And it's an, it's an artifact from something. I don't know. It probably means I have a tumor or some shit. That'd be my luck. Like, this means you have a 40-foot tumor in the side of your head. Like, great. This is my life. Well, I'm only going to bring the crowbar right now because I think if we have to kill anybody, we should be fine. Roman one-shots with any weapons, so it's not that concerning. When I was a child, I would come here with my parents. It's an impressive church. We don't really have churches like these in America. Like, in the United States, you know, everything here is from after, like, the year... I mean, the oldest stuff that we have here is, like, maybe from like the late 1500s, middle 1600s in there, and so we don't have like big churches like this made out of like stone and whatnot here. I don't know. Those are things that I'd like to see if we ever go to Germany or we ever go to, or I say we, but if I ever go to Germany or if I ever go to England or if I ever go to, you know, any of the places that have these big stone cathedrals, basically like anywhere in Europe or Russia or any country that has like thousands of years of history where they started building these things right around the Dark Age, it won't budge. Okay, so we're gonna have to go up and through the roof. I think there's a bunch of, like, piles and stuff we gotta get rid of over here, too. We do have a castle in the United States, though, weirdly enough. There was a guy who built a castle here. There's also a guy who was, like, a drug lord. I don't remember what he did, actually. There was a guy here, and he built, like, an underwater castle or something like that. There's a guy wandering around in here. And I don't recall whether or not he's friendly. He has a gun. I remember he has a pistol. 
So for right now, I'm just going to chill right here and we'll fiddle with this pile while we wait for him to come through and over here. We're going to have to get rid of this anyways. Otherwise, we got to go the long way around and it's just a giant mess and a pain in the ass. He might have left. I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye out for it. I'm kind of worried he's going to come up behind me. But if I see him making noise down here, hopefully we'll be okay. As I recall, he patrols down here. He walks up. There he is right there. He was out back. So we're going to wait for a second. I don't know what the priest is doing over here. He closed the doors behind him, though, being the gracious fellow that he is. The man of God that he is. He does not believe in waiting. He doesn't believe in wasting heat or electricity. That's just not how he was raised. And the Lord said on the sixth day, Thou shalt not waste heating with an open door. That's like one of the pivotal civic crimes. I'm pretty sure that's the reason for like 90% of the violence in the hood. Like, people just keep leaving windows and shit open when the heater's on, and just like, people can't handle it. They fly off and they're like, you know what, I'm gonna sell a bunch of drugs and I'm gonna shoot some people. And then I'm gonna feel better about the heating that I just wasted. <laughs> oh my god. I know there's gonna be that guy. Actually, socioeconomic positions are the reason why things happen in an impoverished area. I'd be like, I know, I took sociology. I know, he's up there on the roof. So, that means that we loot his house like crazy right now. Because he is not in a position where he can stop us. Only trash and desert here. Okay, well, there's nothing over there. Is he just, like, standing? This guy typically actually patrols around. So he's moving around in there. I'm just going to have a look down here. We can fight him if need be. He's like an old man, as I remember. So, I, if he attacks us, he's going to get dealt with. Because Roman's one of the better combatants in the game. We might get wounded, but I think we can take him. I'm just going to loot the hell out of everything down here. There we go. A little bit more right there. There's a lot of debris piles around here. Like a serious, serious allocation of debris piles. Either way, I'm robbing this dude's house like crazy. Aw, oh, man. that's there's, You need a shovel for this building. Jesus. There's like rubble piles everywhere. Maybe I'll make a shovel tonight then. Or the next day or whatever. Usually he patrols around, but it looks like he's actually... Like, stuck or not interested anymore. I don't know. I don't actually know if he's hostile either. I've I've heard some people say different things. Some people say he's hostile. Some people say he's not. We may not have many options over here right now. I mean, we could find out. Hey, what's up, buddy? Is he an innocent? I don't know. We're about to... Hmm. We'll find out if people get depressed for this. Eh, it's a risk I'm not willing to take. I'm pretty sure he's like a police officer or something like that. I don't remember. I don't remember, but... Oh, he had a gun and a knife. Okay, so either way, bonus loot for me. I mean, it's kind of a dick move, but... Oh, well. We need, a, we need a saw and we need some shovels to clear this place out, I guess. So that's what I'm going to bring back with me on the next go. I'm going to grab some of the stuff back by this other entrance over here. I hope the priest doesn't know that I murdered people. I need him to talk to the J-Man on my account later on, and I'm hoping that he'll come around. So, with the way that in Catholicism, I have a religious question here. In Catholicism, and don't take this as me being like a dick, I actually, I earnestly mean this because I was raised Protestant, and so this always interested me. When you go to confession, does that mean that it's forgiven, or do you have to, let's say you murder somebody, and then you go to confession, and you confess that you murdered somebody. Does that make it go away? Like, is it okay now? Or, do you have to suffer the consequences and, like, go and, like, turn yourself in for that to count? Because if it seems like you could just confess for that and then just, like, not have to turn yourself in afterwards, it seems like that's a bit of a, like, a, I don't know, like a, a deific legal loophole, I guess. I mean, I don't know, maybe the Catholics can fill me in on that. I don't know. It just seems like, it seems exploitable. It seems like God might want to, like, patch that up a little bit. Like, he might want to put, like, a hot fix out, like a .01 version, real fast. Just let people know that, hey, you have to actually mean it. You have to, like, turn yourself in. You know, you can't just, like, confess it. But, yeah, that's that's my question of the day for Catholic people. I, uh, that's, I've always wondered that, and I figured I would ask. Oh, everybody's sad because I did murder. Oh, man. Nothing like doing murder to make people upset. All right, so apparently he is an innocent. That's what I learned. Bruno's not sad. Bruno's like, to hell with that guy. Beat him to death again. If he keeps dropping loot, just beat him like he's a... <laughs> beat him like he's a Koopa Troopa. Making coins pop out of his ass over and over and over again. 
Headbutt him to death until he don't move anymore if he keeps dropping loot. All right, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerdcast for the next episode of This War of Mine. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do.